I had to hold the coil against the parking meter. I'd push the button, and the back EMF would blow the hairspray. And they were all on timers, so you'd get your six minutes, and then it would put up the red flag. I'd blow the hairspray out of the parking meter, and I could park for days for a penny. <laughs> Life of crime started. Now, how do we know that anything that's happening in this coil that's going to affect your lip, your adenoids, the organs in your body, where you're germinating an awful lot of the adversary, the alien life forms that live in your own body, in your own blood? We'll just do this. Oh, whoops, I've got my room key in my pocket, and that's magnetic. It'll wipe out your floppy disks, your credit cards, anything that's magnetic medium. So I won't do it on me right now, but I normally do. Now let's do some magic here. I don't know what this mason jar was, but I picked it up in the uh, kitchen a minute ago. We're going to set it upside down on the table. This marvelous scientific device is like the apple that fell on Sir Isaac Newton's head. It happens to be a one inch diameter thunder washer. I have tied a string to it because I'm tired of chasing it around the room and on the floor. I'm going to put this washer on this coil. And it always lives in the water. Now watch that on three, Mike. One, two, three. We're going to do it again. I didn't allow quite enough strength here, but you got the idea. One, two. Much more. Three. What's happened here is we have that very short, 10 microseconds long pulse of magnetic energy coming out of the coil at 19,000 gauss, G-A-U-S-S, 19 kilogauss, which generates a back EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force in any organ, any tissue, any blood, any bone marrow, anywhere, if you hit the thymus, don't forget the T cells, the T helper cells, the killer cells are growing in your thymus. How do we purify that thymus? Hold the coil, push the button. How did I grow my hair back? Maybe I was bald. I can't go to a conference where people have seen me three years ago without having some bastard walk up and pull my hair. <laughs> Bob, I just lost a $50 bet. We thought you were wearing a toupee. Well, I'm not. I said, well, give me some. I'm the guy that grew the hair back. And all you do there... <laughs> Look, it goes right through my hollow head. <laughs> That's the magnetic field. It totally passes through the body. Do it again, this is fun. <laughs> Same as whether my head's in it or not. And that back EMF, electromotive force, generates a surge of about one milliampere, hundreds of times stronger than that necessary to use in the blood, in any tissue that's still alive. As long as you're not a mummy and totally dehydrated, as long as you have blood or saline solution in your body fluids, you're about 80% by weight of salt water. This device will get rid, cure, anything that continues to germinate in the nerve sheathings like MS, LS, uh, herpes, etc., or HIV. And then you have a permanent cure. These people aren't going to come down with their own self-infection due to germinating, hibernating cells in a couple of years. It's that simple. And have you learned any of this in school? Has any, have any one of you heard any of this from your doctors, 
No. Don't forget, a patient cured is a customer lost. They can charge fifty to two hundred thousand dollars for surgery and chemotherapy. You can cure it for the price of a package of Wrigley's chewing gum. It is that simple. And it's been done over and over and over. And our main problem with this is unbelievability. It is so simple, so cheap, so obvious. It will stand the test of time with any engineer that you know. How do you generate a back EMF? Well, you make a time varying field. You have a question? Brain parasites? Three weeks. Yeah. You might. No, I won't suggest that you try the carotid arteries and keep it below about uh, four hertz. Well, let me talk about uh, brain problems and cancer in just a moment. This is the most fascinating story that I know. To cure anything, you need to do three things. You need to make silver colloid, which we've shown you how to do. All the modern machines will make colloid as well as stimulate your marijuana plants and the point of silver. for uh, Proposition 215 here. Thank God we're getting some enlightenment in our culture. <laughs> Tobacco is four and a half times more addictive than heroin and far more dangerous to life. Marijuana is totally denied. Never mind the political statement. <laughs> Okay, we've showed you how to make colloids. We've showed you how, and we have a circuit diagram. We have two of them, in fact. We have the old Model T on page four, and the latest model on page 10 of the last sheet. Either one of these will work beautifully. We have a parts list. If you don't know what a resistor is, you take that parts list to Radio Shack, put it on the counter, give me one of those, and one, oh, that's a resistor. Well, which end of the soldering iron do you hold? You know, you'll get it done. We'd rather you built your own. You don't have to buy anything. This is the beauty of this treatment. Nobody has to sell you anything, and it works. AZT and DDI and DDP, all of these things do not work. Ozone does not work. These hundreds of herbs that are in these clinics do not work. They might detoxify you a little. You might look like you're getting better, but you die, baby. And the hundreds of people we've done on this, about 2,000 actually, are now symptom free. They're back at work. And this is the truth, and we have the laboratory test to prove it. You have testimonials? Oh, yes. We have dozens of people who have come forward. In my last lecture, were you there when that guy grabbed the microphone? Uh, oh, man, I'd never seen him before in my whole life. He grabbed the microphone. He says, I'm 80 years old. I'm an attorney. I was given up for dead. My cancer had metastasized into every organ in my lip. I was sent home to write my will and die. That was a year ago. I read about your thing in, uh, I guess it was the Thompson Letter for Doctors. It's been published in Pace. It's been published in Explore. It's been published in 73s. Dozens of magazines have reported, uh, uh, say, republished this paper. He said, I built one. After three weeks, I was up. He said, I was under intensive care at home. I had a 24-hour-a-day series of nurses coming in. He said, I'm jogging five miles a day now. And what did he say? I'm working 16 hours a day to catch up for all the time that I lost when I was dying. And he wanted to thank me and shake my hand. And then they cut off the tape. But that's life. But we've had hundreds of people come forward now. Herpes, lupus, AIDS, hundreds of AIDS patients. And yet the AIDS Act Up people try to kill me when I go to New York. They offered to burn down the Hotel New Yorker and the Hotel Pennsylvania if they allowed me to speak there to a lot of doctors who'd come there to hear this. And they finally bloodied me, as I mentioned. When I got to the men's room at the New Jersey airport, I was shocked that I had blood running down my face and on my shirt. I didn't think the guy had hurt me. I was sort of the spur of the moment. And I thought, these damn New Yorkers are really cool. Not one that person looked me in the eye and said, man, you've got blood on your face. 